The Assyriology channel is dedicated to the study of ancient Mesopotamia and the ancient Near East. The 2019 ASOR annual meeting will be held November 20th through November 23rd in San Diego, California at the West End San Diego. The American Schools of Oriental Research, or ASOR, is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to initiate, encourage, and support research into and public understanding of the history and cultures of the Near East and wider Mediterranean world. The annual meeting brings together ASOR's vibrant academic community to present their current findings and discuss their research. The conference attracts approximately 1,000 scholars and enthusiasts of various fields of study pertaining to the ancient Near East. Today's video is going to be an overview of the program for the 2019 ASOR annual meeting. The annual meeting is just three days away from the time I'm recording this. The ASOR annual meeting has a format that someone like me associates with something like a metal festival where we would run around between different stages where different bands are playing at the same time and we have to prioritize which band we want to see. Only since it's an academic conference, it's different scholars and you have to prioritize which presentations you want to attend. Um, they have as many as 10 different halls with 10 different presentations going at any given time. And they're broken apart into 12 different sessions. So you have to prioritize which one you want to go see. Now, luckily, Ancient Near East Studies is broken apart into different subfields that some of us might be more interested in some of them than others. For instance, I'm interested primarily in ancient Mesopotamian studies, whereas there's also biblical studies and Egyptology presentations going on at the same time. So most of the time, I would just attend whichever Mesopotamian studies program is going on at the time. However, as we'll see, sometimes there is, there's definitely some, there's some conflict here looking over this program um, on which presentation I would attend if I was there. Sadly, I'm not going to be able to attend this year's ASOR annual meeting. Um, but regardless, today's video, I'm going to go over the program as if I was going to be there and we're going to take a look at some of the presentations that are going to be there and I'll talk about which ones I would attend if, if I was going to be at this year's ASOR annual meeting. The first day on the program is Wednesday, November 20th. It begins at 7 p.m. with an address from Eric H. Klein from the George Washington University. The address is at the Emerald Ballroom, and afterwards at 8.30, there's the opening reception at the Crystal Ballroom. The following day, Thursday, November 21st, is the beginning of the sessions. On the first session of the first day, I would head over to the Diamond One Hall to attend the 1E presentations. Between Cities, Exchange and Urban Networks 1. The theme of this session features papers that concern cities as centers of economic, ideological, and cultural exchange that speak to the issues such as movement of goods and or people, economic and socio-cultural relationships between cities, changes in urban networks related to the political and ideological forces, and subjects related to the intercity relationships. These papers look at tracing networks across cities. Presentations in this series that are noteworthy to me as someone who focuses on Mesopotamian studies include the management and movement of resources between the first millennium BCE Mesopotamia from Shenaziah of the University of Vienna, Ask the Babylonians whom you know, scholarly exchange across cities in the Neo-Syrian Empire by Jennifer Singletary of Isenbrons, um, On the Road Again, the Kidu Frenzy and the Political Significance of Simultanicity by Carolyn Wallace from the University of Helsinki. Um, at this moment, I'd, I'd like to take a second to say, if I don't necessarily pronounce a scholar's name correctly, I apologize. Um, I, 
you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with all of these scholars. I'm familiar with some of them, and a lot of them do have very challenging to say names. Um, so I'd like to apologize ahead of time if I, if I butcher someone's name. Beginning with session two, I see a fierce conflict in prioritization as to which of the presentations to attend. Um, there's fascinating presentations at both the Opal Hall and the Diamond One Hall, as well as several other of these presentations. I think uh, as a Mesopotamian studies enthusiast, I would prioritize the presentations that are happening at the Opal Hall, D2 Ancient Inscriptions 1. It starts off with a presentation from Magnus Weidel of the University of Liverpool, ghee, cheese, and other cool stuff, a study of the administration of the dairy industry on Earth 3 Uma. I mean, that's just really cool. I, I really wish I could attend that. Um, however, over at the Diamond One Hall, there's the 2E Between Cities Exchange and Urban Networks 2 series. Um, this is a, a continuation of the, the series that we had just attended earlier, um, but, you know, with a, a plethora of, of other interesting scholars giving presentations. The third session would also cause me some conflict as to which of the presentations to attend. The Topaz Hall has presentation series 3G, Meeting the Expenses, Ancient Near Eastern Economies 1. The theme of the presentation series is the economies of the ancient Near East, moving beyond the dichotomy between ancient and modern economy. All of the presentations in this series are really interesting. Um, Robert Mittick-Collin from the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science gives a presentation titled Merchant Numeracy, How Well Did Professional Practice Mirror Mathematical Ideals in the Old Babylonian Period? Jason Silverman from the University of Helsinki gives a presentation titled Economics Without Society or Politics, the Interrelation of Assumptions and Values of the Economic Model Building in the Ancient Near East. Jason Silverman's the scholar that's behind the Facebook book, the Facebook group Ancient Near Eastern Empires, which is also a YouTube page. Uh, he's got a really interesting video on there about uh, Mesopotamian themed Legos. I highly encourage you to check that out if you have not. As interesting as that presentation series sounds, I think for session three, I would have to head over to the Ivory Hall to check out Thinking, Speaking, and Representing Animals in the Ancient Near East, New Perspectives from Texts and Images. The theme of this series is that recent studies have foregrounded the importance of animals in the history of human life at all times. In the ancient Near East, animals have always been important, as evidenced by textual, iconographic, and archaeological sources. This session focuses on birds highlighting their roles in everyday life and in symbolism and magic. I mean, this is a really, really cool presentation. Um, what really sticks out is Gina Constantinopoulos' presentation, The Raven, the Falcon, and the Dove, Birds, and the Mesopotamian Exorcist. I mean, talk about a cool press presentation title. Um, if you missed it, there was an interview with Gina Constantinopoulos over on the Digital Hammurabi channel. If uh, when you're done watching this, I highly recommend going and checking that out if you missed it. Uh, Gina is a, a terrific Assyriologist. She's a Facebook friend of mine, and she really does excellent work. Um, and the other presentations in this series are, are fascinating, too. I mean, just, just birds in ancient Mesopotamia, really, that, that's a topic that, that really speaks to me. I, I couldn't miss this one. Session four is the final presentation series for Thursday. It also presents a challenge in prioritization in it that none of these presentation series pertain to ancient Mesopotamian studies. The most interesting of these presentation series, or at least the one that I would attend, would be the one over at Midway 2, 4J, Small Scale Industries in the Galilee Oil Lamp Manufacturing Workshop. I mean, 
That just sounds really cool. It may not have anything to do with ancient Mesopotamia, but it includes a, a workshop on the making of clay oil lamps in the Hellenistic period. Um, and it has a hands-on workshop on mold designs and lamp production. Uh, this, that's just really cool. Friday morning kicks off bright and early with the session five presentations. For this, I would head over to the Diamond One Hall to catch a presentation from the world's greatest librarian, Chuck Jones, from the Pennsylvania State University. Most of you are probably already aware of who Chuck Jones is from Ancient World Online or a the AWOL blog, um, as well as numerous other digital media sources. Ch Chuck Jones is very, very well established. He's, he's a great guy. Um, his presentation is sharing your work library ethics, privacy, and commercial repositories. Um, these presentations don't necessarily directly pertain to ancient Mesopotamian studies, but are rather presentations that would just be useful for any academic to attend in general, especially somebody like me who's not necessarily up on these sort of practices. Another fascinating series that will be taking place during session five that day, over at the Ivory Hall, there's the Tours in Archaeology of Crafting Workshop. This is just neat. Uh, it's, it's a crafting workshop, uh, which is very appealing to me. I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of the artsy type. Um, there's a presentation from Jonah S. Smith from not only the University of Pennsylvania, but from the John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art, which is a, a very prestigious art institute um, that's local to me, uh, that you wouldn't really necessarily associate as having anything to do with ancient Near Eastern studies most of the time. So that's really exciting to see that name on there, um, as well as just these these, this workshop's really cool, um, so that's something I would I would definitely consider hopping over there and checking that out as well for session five. And speaking of artsy presentations, during session six over at Diamond Two, there's the presentation series "Art Historical Approaches to the Near East 2. All four of these presentations sound fascinating. Um, form and function of architectural representation in the ancient Near East, the case of Neo-Syrian art and the Mesopotamian tradition pops out to me as, as the most Mesopotamian themed, although I see there's also one to do with Susa over in Elam. Um, as much as I love art and art history for session six, I would have to prioritize heading over to Ivory to catch the presentation series, Archaeology of Mesopotamia. Uh, the first three of the presentations are by scholars from the University of Pennsylvania. They all deal with Lagash and the archaeology that's going on there currently. The fourth one deals with Uruk. And then the fifth one is a unique presentation that deals with the question on how many cuneiform tablets were baked during antiquity. Session seven is another instance where none of the presentations in the session are specific to the ancient Mesopotamian studies. Uh, the, the presentation series that sparks the most interest to me is over at Crystal One, there's a presentation series, Approaches to Dress and the Body. Uh, one, of, one out of four of the presentations deal with the uh, dress in ancient Assyria and Babylonia. Um, and the other three are interesting as well. I mean, just clothing in the ancient world is a, is a fascinating topic. For session eight, I would most certainly head over to the Crystal One Hall to catch the presentation series, Landscapes of Settlement in the Ancient Near East. This is one of the more exciting presentation series that's going to be taking place at this year's ASOR conference. It kicks right off with a presentation about the Upper Diyala region. Um, it includes a presentation from two scholars from Harvard, the quest for more water, the story of the Kerez water system and the herbal plain. Um, and then that's followed immediately by a presentation from Rocco Palmero, Settlements, dem Demography, and Land Use Between the Neo-Assyrian and the Parthian-Sasanian Periods in Mesopotamia. Um, it's just, it's, that's a neat presentation series that, that I'm sad I'm going to miss. For session nine, I would head over to Diamond Two to catch the presentation series, Houses and Households in the Near East. Archaeology and History 1. 
theme of this presentation series is that recent studies have foregrounded the importance of the house and households in multiple periods and over varied regions using different methods, archaeology, text, anthropology, and social theories. This session continues the conversation between varied subdisciplines and regions by highlighting the social and economic aspects of domestic spaces. I'd be really excited to catch the presentation by Elizabeth Stone from Stony Brook University. Houses, houses households in the new excavations at Ur. Um, Elizabeth Stone's done a lot of work at Ur, and I'd be really excited to, to hear what she has to say. For session 10, I would definitely head over to Diamond One to catch up the presentation series, Archaeology of the Near East and Video Games. The theme of this presentation series is that the session offers a multidisciplinary discussion of theoretical and methodological approaches to the study of archaeology and video games. This framework of archaeogaming includes the use of archaeological methods within game worlds, the creation of video games for or about archaeological practices, and the critical study of how archaeology is represented within video games. This is the most unique presentation series that will be taking place at the, the AOSOR conference, or really any conference. Uh, boy, this is really exciting stuff for those of us who grew up playing video games. Um, some of these games I've played, the, there's a presentation, Mike Culture and Archaeology and Sid Meier Civilization. I've, I've played all of the Civilization games. so. You know, there's a lot of appeal for, for a lot of us within this uh, presentation series. I, I definitely would, I'm definitely really sad I'm going to miss this one. Also taking place during session 10 is the presentation series over at the Topaz Hall, the Archaeology of the Kurdistan Region 2. Um, although I, I personally would prioritize the, the video game presentation series, um, there's there's a lot of really exciting presentations here for somebody who's an enthusiast of Mesopotamian studies, specifically northern Mesopotamia. Um, it starts off with one about the herbal region. Uh, the one that, that really pops the most on it is the one from Jason Err from Harvard, teamed up with Rocco Palmero, uh, titled The Creation and Collapse of Imperial Landscapes of Northern Mesopotamia. Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty exciting presentation for somebody who's an enthusiast of Mesopotamian studies. Session 11 is another instance where none of these presentations directly pertain to ancient Mesopotamian studies. Um, in this example, I think I would head over to Crystal One to catch the presentation series, The Secret Lives of Objects, Museum Collections, Hidden Histories, and Repatriation Efforts too. The theme of this session highlights the importance of object research and context. Papers explore subjects such as collection histories and display, disciplinary approaches, archival research, province, and repatriation efforts. Um, the only one of these presentations that would have directly pertained to Mesopotamian studies was canceled. Um, so the, the four that are left don't necessarily have anything to do with ancient Mesopotamia, but nonetheless, they do sound like they're interesting presentations, so that this is the one I would go with for session 11. The final session of the 2019 ASR convention is session 12. For this, I'd head over to Opal to catch the presentation series, Network Approaches to Near Eastern Archaeology and History. The theme of this session explores recent research using network approaches to the study of both material, cultural, and textural data. These case studies demonstrate the potential of network methods and models to address socio-political complexity and change over various spatial and temporal scales. This presentation series is really exciting. It kicks off with a presentation titled Social Network Analysis of Kings, Queens, and Deities in Neo-Assyrian Texts, which is followed up by a presentation from Christopher W. Jones of Columbia University titled Power and Elite Competition in Neo-Assyrian Empire Towards a Social Network-Based Model, which is then followed up by a, a presentation from Lori Pierce of Berkeley titled Networking as a social strategy among Hellenistic Eric elites, 
that sounds really cool. Um, and it's followed up by another one from Adam Anderson from Berkeley titled Networks and GSI for Social Distance Analysis. I don't know anything about that, but Adam Anderson's totally brilliant. So I'd be really excited to, to listen to him and, and learn about what that's about. Another presentation that I would like to highlight is being given over at Diamond 2 during session 12. It's a part of the Gender in the Ancient Near East 2 series of presentations. It's titled, The Construction of Women's Identities Through Commemorative Objects in Bronze Age Mesopotamia. I just wanted to mention this because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of both of the scholars giving this presentation, so I'm sure it's going to be an excellent one. That concludes our overview of the program for the 2019 annual ASOR convention. After the convention is over, I intend to do a follow-up video in an attempt to cover the events that took place at this year's convention. Unfortunately, these academic conferences are not usually covered, and usually the events that take place are not made available to the public. If you plan on attending this year's ASOR convention, or if you feel I've missed an important presentation, or there's something else I should have talked about in this video, please let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Assyriology channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't, please let us know why in the comments section below. Hit the subscribe button to see more videos on ancient Mesopotamia.